understand and you know how older people are, but just some of the things I hear as an employee over 40. Ageism is a reality and it's unsettling at times, but the need for more positive attitudes doesn't rest solely on young employees' shoulders. Yes, there are younger employees with little experience who think they know everything, but there are also older employees who aren't open to learning anything new, especially from someone younger. Some of us have given up trying to communicate with younger employees altogether. That's not a solution. There has to be some give and take. I think classes on how to interact with millennials would help bridge the generational divide and enable us to better understand each other. For example, younger employees seem to place more emphasis on family than their job, which is neither good nor bad, it's just a different outlook. I've always placed more emphasis on my work because it's my livelihood. When my kids were sick, I found someone to take care of them and made sure I was here for work. But their focus is different now and it's not a bad thing, I just need to understand. every other type of diversity except us. We don't get a piece of the pie. When you're not only ignored, but shunned and made to feel dirty for being who you are, that's not a supportive workplace. Strangely, there are policies protecting LGBT job applicants from discrimination during the hiring process, but none for actual employees. It's like, once you're hired, all bets are off. I was actually coached to not say anything about being gay, and it was terrifying. At times, I still find myself a little hesitant to reveal my sexual orientation because I'm not sure how the person is going to take it, and I don't want to be hurt again. can't see all disabilities with your eyes. Some are invisible. For example, the work we do in our department can be performed by somebody who uses a wheelchair. But is that true for all departments? On the patient side, I think hiring sign language interpreters for deaf and hard of hearing patients would be helpful. Because it's really hard to find someone to communicate with them. We also need some form of specialized communication for our mental health and mental retardation mothers. Because of their illness, depending on the severity, they don't always understand the instructions related to taking care of their newborns. Perhaps it would help if we had someone to follow up with them to make sure they understand. Someone new comes in, Hispanic or not, I try to assist them. This is what I've learned, so let me pass it on to you. But a formal mentoring program where Hispanics in leadership positions guide younger and less experienced employees would have a greater impact. Additionally, more resources for professional development would be helpful. I've had a manager tell me, in so many words, to cut back on the courses I take because she couldn't afford to pay mileage. Sometimes I'm talked down to because I'm Hispanic. When I complain, I don't think management takes it seriously enough. They pat the offender on the head like a child and say, don't do that again, but in a month or so, they're back at it. As a member of Support Services, I'm happy to play a part in changing the way the community views us. We're the Safety Net Hospital and we serve such a diverse group of people. Last year, we adopted a family for Christmas who really needed help. And there was so much support from our department as a whole. Everyone donated and gave what they could and we rallied to make sure their Christmas was a memorable one. I really appreciate the up-to-date equipment, constant training opportunities, and friendliness of our employees all of which helped me do my job more efficiently. I recently needed some information and visited two departments for help. 
Both staffs immediately stopped what they were doing to make sure I got what I needed. And I was amazed.